Hello and welcome to Furious Driving and today I'm at the wheel of a Jag and not just any Jag, this is an X308, the last of the old XJ series, a glorious swan song to an illustrious car which carried on in name and spirit for a few more years after this particular model but this is the end of an era. This car is for sale at Fairview Autos near Orpington in Kent, check the link in the description below. You go hit like and subscribe, subscribe matters, a word from our sponsors, and then on with the review. Furious Driving, presented by Diamond Bright, keeping the Furious fleet shining, and you can protect, clean, and care for your car with 10% off site-wide using code FD10. Bidding Classics, the online marketplace for appreciating classic cars, with more cars added every week. And, and like Diamond Bright, Lancaster Insurance Services is a company I've been a happy customer of for quite some time. Lancaster are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK, covering all eras of vintage to modern classic car and motorbike. So give them a call and see if you can save on your cover. Follow the links in the description below. So the XJ series has to be one of the longest running continuous series of cars in motoring history. It stretches all the way back to 1968 with the original XJ, which was the last saloon designed by William Lyons. And the model ran until 2019 over five distinct generations. Ford bought Jaguar in 1989, bringing them into the premium automotive group, which had Volvo and Aston Martin and Lincoln and various high-end cars to add a bit of kudos to the brand. And there were worries that Ford would fortify Jag and bring them down, but that was the opposite of what Ford wanted to do. There was need for a new XJ at the end of the 1980s, but even Ford's deep pockets weren't deep enough for an entirely new car. So when the X300 came out in 1994, it was basically a massively reworked XJ from the previous generation, a new boot, a new front end, broadly new interiors, but ultimately the same car warmed over with a bit of spice added. And that car stayed in production for a relatively short amount of time. That car was powered by the then new AJ16 straight six, which was a development of the existing six cylinder, and of course the fantastic V12. That was the last platform you could buy the V12. However, that all changed in 1997 when it got a midlife facelift and a new name. The X308 was a development, a facelift and an improvement of the X300 where they rationalised production from the 6 and the 12 cylinder engines to just one, the V8, which we have here, available as a 3.2 Sport or the more potent 4 litre. And while the X300 in itself was kind of a swan song to the old XJ, this was finally it before the all new model eventually came out in 2003. But the fact this was such an old platform is not necessarily a bad thing because it had been one of the best driver's cars in its category on the market for a very long time. Obviously, as time moved on, other cars had stolen a march on it. The new 5 Series, for example, had got dynamically better and better over the years. But Jaguar had done well to get the old Warhorse feeling current and the traditional interior of it, the wood, the leather, the gentleman's club ambience, did make up for a lot of what the newer cars could offer. When it was finally replaced, it was an all-new aluminium car, and Jaguar made a big deal of that new construction technique. They actually launched in the car with a polished metal um, exhibit at the motor show. Uh, that synthesised indicator is a very strange thing indeed. Let's swing around here. It does roll. It does roll, but it does feel very smooth when it does it. And the steering is so, so liquid smooth. It's very light indeed. It is a proper one finger steer car. Oh, love that Aston. It does sort of weight up in the wrong direction in a way because it feels quite heavy to initially move. But as you turn the wheel further, it seems to get lighter and lighter. And perhaps the biggest selling point in this car, apart from the V8, is of course the ride. This car just glides along. I happen to know this road is particularly crashy and badly kept, but we are just floating along here. A little bit of lean through the corner. But wow, so, so nice. That's quite a slow kick down in regular mode. Pop it in sport though, and let's see what happens. Wow, it, 
it really does kick down a lot. <laughs> Now, despite being such an absolute battleship or an oil tanker of a car, it's vast, it certainly feels vast. It's a very easy car to drive, and you can see really precisely where you're going. Those scallops over the headlamps give you a good clue as to where the front of the car is going. Although, at the back, you are aware that there are about 14 meters of boot behind you, but they drop away very suddenly, and it's very hard to see where they are. So parking sensors or a, or a backup camera will be an awesome addition to a car like this. So here under the bonnet, we'll find this, the magnificent AJ V8. AJ standing for a Jaguar, as in a Jaguar 16 for the 16 valve V6, and the AJ 12 for the a Jaguar V12. This is a Jaguar V8, available in the 3.2 or 4 litre capacities. Here in 3.2, it makes 240 horsepower. The 4 litre, 290. Although there was also a supercharged one, which made 340 brake horsepower, which is just immense for this beautiful luxury saloon. All versions were tied to a 5-speed automatic gearbox. The 3.2 and the 4.0-litre, it's a ZF unit. On the supercharged one, which has to handle a bit more power, it's a Mercedes 5G Tronic. Okie dokie, let's take a look around the cabin of the XJ. First of all, as we climb in, we have got this beautiful little V8 logo reminding us what's under the bonnet, the treat we're in for. And we've got these lovely, well, very 1990s oval door handles as well. Step inside and we have got a delicious door card. First of all, black leather effect, plastic at the top, black inlaid wood along the side looking absolutely beautiful. We've got beautifully curving, swooping, flowing door handles cast in shiny metal. Little tweeter hidden up in here as well. And a bigger speaker down here, which is surrounded by chrome and then a bit of carpet down the bottom as well. Everything is very flowing and sweeping and organic. Very Jaguar sinuous, I think is the word we'll use here. This nice leather armrest with the four electric window switches and the electric mirror switch up top. And this flows into a very curvy door pocket as well. Again, carpet lined for silent, non-rattling contents. Stepping into the car, it's a big car with not a massive cabin. It's something you do find with the uh, old XJ series. Nice bit of stainless on the door sill as you climb in. We have got these rather delicious leather bucket seats. This is the sport model, so what we'll find though is there aren't buttons everywhere. This has got electric raising and lowering on the driver's seat, but everything else is on little handles. Manual winders, believe it or not, but this is a sport model where things are done for lightness. Like a Lotus kind of thing. Now you can see kind of the history of the car in its DNA as you look around the cabin, the shape of the architecture of the dashboard and everything else. The fact you've got this huge center um, console here in the middle. But starting at the top, as we always do, we have this big sweeping dashboard which flows from left to right in the car. Little oval air vents pointing out at the windows. We have an absolute forest of this delicious black, very dark wood, which is absolutely beautiful, isn't it? it really is lovely. Um, it does sit slightly incongruously with the plastic inserts for the air vents. Got a nice Jaguar quartz clock here in the centre, but the air vents and things do look a little bit out of place when it's this beautiful lacquered wood and then this kind of grey plastic just popped into it. But this is just something we have to live with in this generation of Jag. Little plastic buttons here for the odometer and dashboard controls. The instruments themselves are heavily recessed, cowled in by the uh, by the dashboard itself. Got a rev counter on the left, redlining at six and three quarter thousand RPM. A speedometer which goes all the way to 170 miles an hour, which is uh, pretty impressive. And a third dial for our fuel and our temperature in there. Stepping a little way back, we have got one of the most fabulous steering wheels I think you're ever going to come across. We've got the perforated leather grips on the side. We've got this real wood top and bottom. In the center, we've got the Leaper, with one of only two brands with an animal face coming straight out at you because it's considered too aggressive and affronting, but it works brilliantly with the Jags. And they have the horn and the airbag. Oh, that's a harp that left its wallet in its other trousers and be awfully grateful if he could uh, borrow 20 pounds until Tuesday. Elsewhere on this fabulous wheel, we have got telephone and radio controls. We've got lights and indicators on the left-hand stalk, wipers on the right-hand stalk, and hidden down here in a bit more plastic, we've got a headlamp leveling and boot release. 
moving over to the center of the car, this big console. They copied this pretty faithfully in the X-Type, this big horseshoe shaped thing with lots of buttons. You can tell this is the 90s. Uh, I actually do prefer this to the modern touch screens because everything has got a place and you can find stuff by touch and by memory. You need, if you need to know where a thing is, you can just do it in the dark without having to worry about going through 17 menus and crashing while you're trying to turn the wipers on, which is definitely better. The plastic does look a little bit Fordish, but then the company was owned by Ford at the time. Going back from our bank of buttons with pretty much everything in it, valet, stability, locking, climate control, radio, radio cassette, CD control, all this stuff. We've got our transmission. This is the famous Jaguar J-Gate. And I think we'll pop it in sport mode today because that would be a lot more fun. And everything around here, as with the doors, is just flowing and curvy and just nice. Huge, huge armrest to, to relax onto just there, which has got a big old cubby in there with space for audio tapes. <laughs> and a little, again curvy, ashtray and lighter socket in there for 12 volts. And looking down there, you can see how long and narrow the footwells are in this car. Up above we have got a little sunglasses holder, all very elastic and, and cushiony. Lights and quite a low ceiling. There are quite a few nice touches that make the thing feel quite cool and quality. These little soft satin metal ends on the door pulls and the, uh, the furriness of the ceiling make it all feel very nice indeed. And the fact that the headrests are made from five separate pieces of leather. It's all attention to detail. Makes the car feel very bespoke, and very luxurious. Luxurious, I will say with a z. Now, if one was to be driven in one's Executive Express, one would open the back door, which is a long, long old back door. Look at that. Which does mean, although it's quite a low car, you have a lot of access into the back seat. Quite a long step down into the car. So you step down into it. My head on it because that is quite low, actually. And once you're in here, though, you sit low and very comfy. It is a big sofa of a car. We've got the same swoopy armrests in the back as we had in the front loudspeakers. We have controllable air vents here in the back for our rear passengers. We have storage in the back of the seats. We have, oh, a nice check out the action on that. Poppy up ashtrays, big door pockets, again, all sort of furry lined. Everything just feels very, very comfy, very, ah executive boardroom. It's a nice place to be. If you are a captain of industry, this would be a lovely place to be driven around in. The boot is quite an interesting shape. There's a button on the dash to open it. We have got our Jaguar face here in the center. We notice there's an XJ Sport as well. Sporter! It's a like an SUV boot that's been turned 90 degrees. SUVs are very short but tall boots. This has got a very low but long and wide boot. So you can put large flat things in here, no problem at all. We've got the Jaguar six disc CD changer in there. We've got our full size spare wheel tucked underneath the floor. I mean, that is a full on full size spare wheel. So yeah, a lot of space, but not great for things that are particularly tall. You won't get many fridges in that, and you'll notice that the rear seats do not fold down. So this is not a car for practicality, it's a car for heavy on the luxury. So although this was an all new car, well, sort of an all new car, that Ford had put literally billions of pounds into, with a new production line at a massive expense, giving better shot lines, better build quality, and an all over better product. This was also, in many ways, the last of the traditional Jaguars, as it was the end of the XJ era of that time. The new ones being more aluminium, more computerized, the new ones just being so much more modern. This still has the feel of a, a classic Jag to it, even though it's a product of the late 1990s the full fat waftiness that you expect and you want from a Jaguar. If you're gonna turn up at a golf club and forget your wallet, this is the car to do it in. It may have an all new dashboard, but underneath the architecture is still very much the old XJ. Oh, let's give it one final boot for posterity. Wow. That noise, that's a proper performance V8. 
This is a, a performance car of the old school. As you look around the bodywork, you can see it is still traditionally an XJ, and you can see very much where it's come from in terms of the X300 platform looking very, very similar indeed. Just that long scalloped flowing bonnet is still there. The insanely long boot swooping away as the XJ always has. And the fact the whole car is just so very, very low and so very, very long. It is pretty much unique in terms of styling. The car is special with the six pot, even more special with the V12, but this V8 is just something else as well. Back in the 70s, when it was, there was a point where Jaguar may have been forced to install the Rover V8 of all things, they made a point of changing the engine bay just enough that they couldn't fit a V8 in the XJ. It wasn't until Ford came along and said, this is ridiculous, you need a new engine, you need a V8. They forced them to change things to install this V8, which in this car lasted in six years in production. Everything about this car is just sheer elegance. You can forget the brashness and the harsh ride of the German counterparts. This is sleek luxury. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed this drive out in this absolutely fantastic X308 V8 powered XJ. A last of its kind, end of an era, but still such an epic, epic car. If you've enjoyed this video, please, as always, hit like and subscribe and join me again next time driving something completely different. Mm -hmm.